another channeled message from the light keepers a group of angelic beings i channel for your awakening and ascension journey support so today we're going to talk about energetic changes within your body and those characteristics and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some tips on how to handle all the energy changes. We're going to talk a little bit about Kundalini. Some of it has to do with that. But in general, it's really energetic shifts and changes because that is really what is happening to us in our awakening and ascension journey. So much is changing energetically and we are energy beings. So therefore, we start seeing those shifts and changes in us and feeling them. So how do we deal with those and what are those characteristics? So we're going to talk about that today. I have a channel for you from the Light Keepers and then I'm going to go through, I think it's six things that you can take away to understand energy better in your body and then some helpful tips to go along with it. So thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Carolyn Zeiser. I'm a channel, I'm a distance energy healer, and I'm a spiritual awakening mentor. And I offer these channels for your awakening journey support. So my hope for you today today and always in these videos is that you take a little bit of something away for the puzzle of your own journey. A little puzzle piece for your own puzzle of your own journey. So today I'm going to get started on the channel and then we're just going to talk right through some of these characteristics, some of the things you might notice, and I'm going to give you some helpful tips. And I'm going to talk also about some of the things that have happened to me and how I've managed through them because I do believe we can actually begin to start mastering these energies in our body, not just be a victim to them, right? Okay, so we're going to go with the channel first and then we'll get going on the rest of this. The divine light within you shines, now opening up in your time to spread the power of who you truly are and so into the body of yourself today to soar higher than you've known before. And then on your way, you will be to experience where flow will come to you in a way that you will have never felt in your day. Opening up the dam it will do of things you have stuffed down not meant for you. And yet in this time as it makes its way, the divine light of energy, we say, will shake and rock your world at times to wake you further in your journey in time. Accelerate your growth it will do and change your ways forever too. You will no longer see things the same way. For when the spark lights the flame of the fire in your name, you begin to see things differently too. And yet, at times, the physicality of it will be difficult, rewiring you in a way that allows all to flow today. Taking you over, you will feel at times and that you have no control, we find. But it is you integrating with your greatest of divine. Now the power you will find one day, as it courses through your being, Allow it to say what it needs and how it will break through all that has held you back, we say too. Making you look at yourself, a great study of you, this awakening today. So as you feel this light of the divine, each to their own, they will in time. Gently a flow it might be, with a subtle shock too, or knock you off your foundation of who you thought you were too. But a higher purpose it has for you today, lifting you up and taking you away from the human suffering that has been, to break through these experiences, even if you do not understand what they are to begin. Lean in and let it be, for it is full of love for you, and always been a part of you too, awaiting for this time it has when you will soar the heavens again. So what they're talking about here is what they call the divine light. And they don't say kundalini, you know, that's really kind of our words, our human words. This is a divine energy in all of us at certain times in our life journey, particularly during the awakening. However, we're also having ascension energies come into us during the time. We're also having potentially kundalini awaken in us, all right? So it's all energies. We're just going to talk a lot today about different characteristics of energy in your body so you can start really kind of identifying what's going on rather than just wondering what is happening to me and then finding some ways that you can actually manage this. Okay, so let's start talking about how energy represents itself in human form in our bodies. So first of all, I want to mention that as many of you may know or have experienced, I'm sure we've all experienced this, is Energy can get stuck in our body, particularly in our major energy centers, our primary chakras. So this can unfold in a number of ways, and you may notice this. Okay, I'll just give you a really good example from my own journey. I, forever and a day, 
I have a stiff upper back and a totally knotted up stiff, stiff neck, all right? I take all my stress there. And this is more kind of a past thing, but my entire life, that's the way it's been. You know, with my career and everything, I would get stressed out. I would get all frozen up through here, frozen in my neck, and just like felt like nothing was moving. Now, this is before my awakening, so I never thought anything of it, right, at all. I just thought, well, I'll just work out. I'll, um, you know, do some body work, which I'll talk about here in a minute. Or I will just, you know anesthetize myself by taking Advil or whatever. I never understood that it was connected into chakras. In fact, I didn't even know what chakras <laughs> were not too many years ago. Anyway, during my journey, what I realized before I was actually awake, just before my dark night of the soul, I had my neck, actually it's my throat chakra, but it's the back of the throat chakra, like in the back of the neck area open up like nobody's business, all right? So what happened for me there was I had, I guess I'll just tell you the detail. I had been seeing somebody at the time and um, he had actually done massage previously. So he was working on my neck one night because I had come back from a really busy day and he had said, oh, let's just all do a massage for your neck. At that time, I think it had a glass of wine too. <laughs> so I was totally relaxed. And to have somebody who's really professional knowing what they're doing, well, what happened was, and this was so divine, I could not believe it. It was, this was meant to happen. What happened is, and to this day, this is how I do my energy work when I work the spine. In between the vertebra, there's that little soft space that he would work. What happened to me at that point in time, because I had stuck energy in my neck forever, and I didn't have flow, all of a sudden, I felt energy course through my body. It became unstuck back here, and it went through to my crown, and I thought my brain was coming out of my head. It felt like electric shocks. I didn't know what Kundalini was at the time. I had no clue. All I knew is that I was kind of freaking out, and I said, oh my gosh, stop. I, have to, I, I need to go lay down. I was dizzy. I was disoriented. All this stuff, right? So the point in this is I then went to bed. Woke up the next day and was fine. However, what I realized later after I went through my awakening is this was where I was blocked in one of my energy centers to not allow the kundalini to flow through me. And that's when it flew through me when I had a massage, okay? So again, there's probably some conversation about the throat chakra here too, but we won't get into that. There's multi-layered reasons these things happen. But the point is, is I had stuck energy in an energy center. You may likely experience that as well, whether it's your root chakra, whatever it is, you may start noticing things. For instance, you may have blockages in your crown. You may have blockages in your third eye. Maybe you're getting a lot of headaches. That may be a sign of you have stuck energy, okay, in one of your major energy centers. So I'm going to quickly move to helpful hints on this one because I think I need to tie that in right away. One of the biggest things that I realized later on in my journey as I realized Kundalini had opened up, and honestly, that's the only full-on experience I'd had with Kundalini in a massive way. And I know many people have extreme experiences with Kundalini, and that's not why we're here to talk about that. But just know from one degree to another, you're going to have likely uh, some kind of energetic, highly energetic, divine um, experience, and call it what you want, Kundalini. So what I looked back on and realized, and I realized we can't go back in time and start over, but for 20 years, I had been doing body work. I have shiatsu massage on a regular basis. Every two weeks I go. Well, and this is one of the helpful hints we'll talk about, or I'll list again later, is body work on your meridians and your energy centers. That's what shiatsu does. It's a, it's a combination of acupressure and um, like Western massage. Um, and what happens is it works the areas where you're blocked all the time. So I was constantly for 20 years getting myself worked on where I was unblocking flow. I didn't know I was preparing for this, right? But I definitely know that there was purpose in this to come so that I would awaken to my full energy body fairly quickly because I went through a warp speed awakening so I could do the work that I'm doing. So not everybody's on that trajectory, but my point in this is 
everybody can benefit from body work. So what I would say to you, if you're noticing, whether you want to call it Kundalini or a lot of energy blockages where you're feeling tightness or you're feeling some kind of reaction in one of the major energy centers, and then it exudes out to the rest of the body too, if we don't deal with it, is I would highly recommend therapeutic shiatsu massage. Now, massage in general is great, but shiatsu is super therapeutic and they work on the meridians. Now, you can argue also too, acupuncture is a great opportunity because it's very similar. Um, I just chose the shiatsu route. So look into that if you are realizing that you're having issues dealing with energy, which most of us do at one time or another in this journey. And so it will help unblock the dam that you've built up in your energetic flow system within your body. Okay, so what they're showing is that, okay, they're showing, first of all, that, that Kundalini, oh, can be the dynamite that unblocks the dam is what they're saying. Remember, I talk a lot about the flow of the stream. So this is also that allowing the flow of that energy through you, the flow of the stream through your body, all right? And we have blockages. We have a lot of things that happen to us over the course of our journey, whether it's physically related, even just the fact that I play a lot of tennis, I knot myself up all the time. So basically what's happening is that shiatsu massage is working out the meridians, working out the energy centers so I have flow, all right? So I highly recommend that. I could talk all day about that. Can you tell? <laughs> anyway, energy healing. That's another thing that is very helpful because energy healing can also assist you very dramatically in working your chakras and your energy flow. So in combination with that, that may be something you want to consider. You can do energy healing on your own chakras. Everybody has that opportunity. You just have the intent to do it, sit down in meditation, create your process. Create your process to work on your energy centers. Your primary seven chakras, I always say. Focus on that for now. Energy healing, you can do. You can do distance energy healing. You could get Reiki done. So again, remember, we talk a lot about self-care during this journey. It's one of the most important things you can do. That also has to do with body work. How do we treat our body? How are we helping flow in our body? So this can help stuck energy as well. Movement, all right? Are you getting exercise in some way? Now, that doesn't mean you have to go, you know, sweat buckets and, you know, lift a mountain of weights. You know, that may be my choice, right? But it doesn't have to be that way. As long as you're moving in the course of the day and you're moving your body and you're helping that energy flow through along with drinking water, all right? Drinking a lot of good water. So again, we're, we're focusing on the flow, unknotting all the stuff that we've had stuffed down in us for so long. Now remember, when we talk about Kundalini, Kundalini is here to open us up. Okay, they just said to our highest good. Okay, they just said the body is a, is a big component to that because that's where all the energy flows through because it's the vessel in which we travel our journey. So again, we go through the mindset change, all right, the change in how we think and feel and what we believe, but our body shifts and changes too. So that's got to come along for the journey. So Kundalini is also going to work within our body to open us up to the things we've stuffed down, all right? So the point here is, is know that as you are feeling this expansiveness of energy in you, whether you identify it as Kundalini or not, you may realize that all of a sudden you're pretty raw emotionally or all these experiences are coming back from the past. Kundalini is here to open up these energy centers and to say, no more, let's clear this out. Let's deal with these things. And they're in your face then, okay, to one degree or another. So there is not just one experience with divine energy. There are multiple experiences. You can have what I consider kind of a tame experience like I had, which basically where I was blocked was in my throat or my back of my neck. And then when that unleashed, everything changed for me. I didn't realize it at the time, but again, it's a process, right? I actually have had real good flow. I've continued my shiatsu work. I continue all of that self-care stuff. I didn't know for 20 years I was prepping for an awakening. I didn't even know what that was, right? But you might look back on your journey and say, ooh, I've done these things all along to prepare for this. Who knew? And some of us haven't done anything, so that's not a big deal. It's just the way it was meant to be. And now you can start doing these things and considering these things in your journey because that divine energy here, that kundalini, if you want to call it that, is here to open us up to our higher good, to allow that kind of flow, to remove those blockages. And a lot of those blockages are emotional stuff we've stuffed down or turned a blind eye to when we don't look at. 
and we can see that in our day to day. Great example is, and I was like this at one point in my journey for quite some time. I've always felt I'm pretty good at dealing with things to a point, and then I kind of just move on, right? Well, that's not clearly dealing with and understanding what has occurred in my past and then clearing it out. Well, in the awakening, we know that they're in your face, right? Those little remnants are in your face. And so one example is being a workaholic. You know, what are we stuffing down and not dealing with and we're working instead? Maybe we do understand it, but we don't want to really mess with it, right? There are many things. Um, addictions um, are a really good example of how that we turn a blind eye to things that we don't want to deal with or we don't even know have happened to us. And in the awakening journey, we know that comes up. And Kundalini, divine energy, allows us to open up to all of it. Because one of the important things in the Ascension journey, as you all know now with listening to my videos, is we are clearing all of this crud out so that we can be lighter and we can understand ourselves better. And then we can move into a greater knowledge of who we truly are and then continue growing in light and growing in that higher vibration. Because we can't take that stuff with us. So Kundalini's here to help us clear that out. Okay, so that, that's the first one. So now we're going on to number two. So this is a really interesting thing that I have recently learned. Divine energy is now starting to, with many of their talking about the new children, and this came in the other day, come in at the crown. And oh, God, I have chills. Okay. it's And I know that probably for most of you doesn't make sense. However, what they're saying, they're, it's coming in in a different way through, okay, the downloads is what they're saying. Okay, they just said offered through the crown versus the base of the spine. Oh, okay, so what they're saying, this has to do with, okay, this is all new information to me, design, the design of the new children, oh, of the hybrid children. Whoa, I have chills. Okay, that's fascinating. So Kundalini, okay, so we could probably go on and on about that. But anyway, what they told me the other day was that Kundalini can come in, divine energy, and I'm just going to call it divine energy from now on, can come in through the crown. Now what can happen, once again, what we've got there is it can get stuck up here. And so depending on the bodily system and where you're at with your flow journey and what we've got stuff down, you're going to, you know, it's like kind of fits and starts. How's that going to move through you one way or the other? A lot of us have it start at the base of the spine and roar right up through, through the spine to the crown, but it can get stuck in certain chakras. But what they're talking about with the new children is oftentimes it's coming in through the head. So what we can see with that, this is actually leading to the next one, which is what you may also notice, regardless of whether, you know, it's come in through the crown or not, is divine energy that is at times stuck in us, you know, not flowing. Remember, always think of the stream, all right, and the no dam, all right, there's no dam, the stream, okay, so that flow that we have that we're trying to create in our journey through unblocking all of our emotions, dealing with the things we haven't dealt with, learning who we are, dealing with relationships. It goes on and on, right? The things that we haven't looked at all are here for us to look at. But what happens is some of the, the ways we can tell that potentially we are dealing with divine energy is there are feelings oftentimes of what, and they always give these examples of like a short circuiting or it feels like, okay, they just said, Okay. Oh, jeez. Okay. Like you're going to stroke out sometimes in the head. All right. I had it the other day where um, it it felt like, well, I, I don't know. Most of you probably have felt this where you get a little tingy feeling in a part of your head. And I had it the other day and I knew immediately that this was energy. All right. And again, remember, this is where my issue is, usually the neck area. So, you know, even though I have body work done regularly, I still have this happen. And I thought, ooh, I know what this is. Something's moving in there. Something's stuck. It felt like electrical sparks in me. So we're going to talk about how we can actually 
manage that and work with it and kind of master it as we go along here. But needless to say, I was assisted in helping remove that feeling and make flow happen more readily within myself. But what you may feel are sparks, short circuiting, feels like you have um, little twings of, of energy moving through you. Sometimes it's in your head, oftentimes it's through the rest of your body. And you might feel that, sometimes you get twitches. You may get twitches in your body in certain places. And you may find that um, that's, that's happening regularly and that should be a sign to you that kind of that's maybe potentially an area where you have some stuck energy. So it's gonna show up as like causing sparks, shocks, short circuits potentially. But remember, divine energy can blast that dam open, okay? And that's where we can start, this energy starts moving through us and when it hits a block, that dam, then this is where it starts acting out. And what it starts doing is starting to spark, short circuit. Just think of a, an electrical system, I mean, because that's what we are. That's what we are. So you can kind of use your use that as your metaphor for your own body. All right. So when you feel those things, those are signs, um, particularly when you start really noticing the patterns for yourself, you can start realizing that this is energy coursing through, the, through you. Now remember, we also have energy coming in, as I mentioned, for ascension. That's a little different, although, and I'm just gonna give you my examples of that. Now, I guess I'll just do that now and then we'll move on into the other characteristics of energy changes in your body. But what I notice for myself, there is a difference between the divine, what I'll just call the divine Kundalini energy, all right, compared to ascension energy. I mean, it's all divine, you can argue, but it's different. So what happens for me and for many is that we, we can feel fatigue, we can feel like all of a sudden you just have to go to sleep. I don't take naps, but mm, I do now when I all of a sudden know, whoa, something's happening energetically. And whether that's around a full moon, new moon, or just energies have come into the planet. Um, again, I've mentioned Amanda Lawrence to you guys before on Facebook. Um, she's from Glastonbury and she does these amazing energy downloads. So I always seem to time directly with her when I feel something. I'm like, oh, wow, this is severe because I don't... I don't have a huge reaction to um, these energies, but I have in the, more so in the last year or so. But she's a great reference point if you're interested. But anyway, the point of that is, is I will end up taking naps at, where I don't take naps, but I get fatigue from the ascension energies. All right, I also get anxiety from the ascension energies. Okay, what I have found with more the divine energy, the kundalini energy, it's very physical. Okay, and it's also very emotional. But to me, there's a subtle difference between the two. Not that you have to figure it out and define it, but it's nice to kind of start, like I said, mastering the understanding of these energies rather than where we can so often feel in this journey, we're just a victim of what's happening to us. You know, our higher self planned this and here we are as the human, we don't have a clue and things just happen. Well, I am here to tell you, I do believe we can work to manage these energies. We just have to understand our patterns and how we respond to these energies. All right, so we're gonna move on to the fifth one. So another piece here is a character, characteristics of energy changes in your body. Once you start mastering meditation, which as you know is the foundation of this journey, as they say, do not build your house on a foundation of sand. Okay, so then they always say, Meditation is your foundation for your life journey. And there's all the reasons for that. We talk about it all the time. But when you start moving into a deeper state of meditation, and for me, what that means is I get past the 15 minute mark. That's just kind of where I am. I kind of struggle during the first 15 minutes. And you know, we all have our own patterns. And I've been meditating for about probably regularly four years. And I know my patterns, but when I get past the 15 minute mark, which you know what? I'm gonna tell you lately, I've been really horrible at spending more than 15 minutes. But when I do, and I'm starting now this last week to do it past 15 minutes, I'm doing 30, 40 minute meditations. What happens there is a completely different state of meditation. And what you'll be able to start doing potentially is, and this is where the starting the mastery of this, um, and I guess you could argue, well, do you ever really master the energetic situations? I think you can be a partner with it, okay? So that's probably a better word, the partnership with the energy. What 
may start to happen for you is as you go into a deeper meditation, all of a sudden the, the energy starts to take over. It's kind of like an anti-gravity um, type of energy. What you're going to potentially notice in your longer meditations as you start moving through the partnership with the energy, but particularly more mastering meditation, is little movements of your body, your hands, your legs. You may feel like somebody's moving you, yet you're not doing it. Your body may start to feel more, um, I'll just say like a rigor mortis feel, and you will also start not feeling your body. It's almost like you don't have a body. I don't want to say you're removed from your body because I've yet to have that happen. I'm sure that's an opportunity down the road. But essentially, it's a very anti-gravity feel. And you, um, as you may, okay, they just said mudras. Okay. Because I don't, as a human, understand that. I think that's poses for, I think that's in uh, Hindu. I don't know. Sorry. But anyway, needless to say, mudras. I think mudras are movements. I think that's energetic movements. Okay, just, they said it is. Ah, okay, I don't know. Anyway, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so certain poses will start to happen. The energy is assisting and moving you, all right, into these movements. But it's really kind of anti-gravity. And so what I notice is I just lift up, all right? I just, I, I offer it to take over for me and to take me into a deeper meditation. And so what happens for me is I will just feel like I'm two inches off the ground, all right? And I feel like I can't feel my body, I can't feel my hands, particularly in my arms. That's the main thing for me and my, my legs. Um, the middle section of my body can be very tight, but the thing is I'm, I'm almost physically floating. This is when the energy starts to take over. So then what I do is I basically say, because I set myself up in advance, I basically say, do as needed for my highest good. And so I do believe we get worked on during that time in these deeper meditations. So my point in this one, in offering it as a characteristic of energy changes in our bodies, these things can start happening in deeper meditation where the energy, the divine energy, is starting to work within you while you are consciously aware as such, all right? You've offered it to come in or actually to work actively within you during these deeper states of meditation. So I would say to you, you might want to try it and experiment with it. Okay, so number six, and the last one, is your body will start naturally finding new ways of dealing with this energy. And I'm going to give you an example for me. I started to notice, well, in my, in my practice, in my business, I work in people's energy bodies all the time, particularly when I'm doing distance energy healing. And what I notice is I then am expelling energy for them. Okay, and I do these huge exhales that are not normal breathing for me or even my normal big breaths as I'm just going throughout my day. They are massive exhales where I know I'm expelling energy for the client. However, that also happens for myself. So I notice that my body has given me a patterned way of expressing out energy. And when you're consciously aware of this, it's much more powerful rather than it just happening. Because then you can use it as a tool as you move forward. Now I use it when I get anxious and I have um, days where I just feel stressed out. One of the things I do is I do breath work, but I usually do it in my meditations. You can do it anytime. But basically what it is, is I just, I just allow myself to go into a deep state of breathing and expel that out. So what I'll notice throughout my day is if I'm feeling anxious, if I'm feeling um, some kind of stress within myself, my body will actually naturally start wanting myself to breathe deeper. And lots of times when we're in anxiety and stress, we have very shallow breathing. So now during the awakening journey, my body has just automatically turned that part on so that I'm noticing, oh, okay, okay. So now I'm consciously aware of this so I can actually help myself and assist myself in doing that. Because once we become aware of these things and our patterns in ourselves, then we can actually turn that switch on and use that tool as we move forward, having those experiences of say anxiety or new energies coming in. Another way that I deal with all the energies coming in from the ascension is again, like I said, fatigue will take over. I will just take a nap. You know, of course we can't all just take a nap, but needless to say, try to slow down in some way. But these big exhales will help you. Meditation will also help you. Dealing with the things that happen to us as this divine energy 
enters in. So working with that divine energy, working through your breath with those exhales, noticing your triggers and really starting to partner with that energy. All right, you can argue you can't master it. Maybe those were the wrong words, but needless to say, working as a partner with it because it makes such a huge difference and it doesn't make you feel like a victim to the energy. So those are the six things I wanted to talk about today. There are many others that we could probably discuss, but I just wanted to hit on some highlights because basically the idea of this is it doesn't need to be just done to you. We can start understanding our patterns. We can start understanding how we can actually participate and how we can actually take back a little bit of control during this journey and then kind of with awe participate in it. So some helpful tips that I want you to know, maybe a couple of these might be a repeat, but what I really feel is important to this journey with the energies is surrender and allow that flow. Just surrender to it. Know that it happens. The more we force and fight, the more difficult this will be. Forget whether it's divine energy in the sense of the Kundalini, because it'll fight you back um, if you if you put up the fight response. And that has to do with like blocking your emotions, um, not taking care of yourself, all of those things that we do to ourselves day to day that we don't think of. Kundalini, the divine energy, will make you look at that. Additionally, surrendering into the idea that we have ascension energies. That's not going to stop. We're energy bodies. We're going to take that in. And finding your own practices, finding the things that help you. What assists you in your journey of dealing with the energies and those characteristics that we see every single day coming into us in our bodies and affecting our day to day. So remember too, this is all for our greater good. So just know that, but these are just tools so that you can better manage through these times as well as understand the characteristics of energies and know your own patterns. All right, so understand and respect it. That's so important. Understanding what we just talked about, the energies, how they show up in you, but respecting them, respecting those energies that are coming into you because it's for your divine good and opening you up to so much more flow. That is so critical for us to be that beautiful vessel that all can work within and also clearing out all of the things that we have stuffed down for so long and not dealt with. And then it makes it either easier for us as we continue to move forward on our journey to be able to deal with those things. So remember to continue to assist your body and mind in whatever way that means. We talked about some of the things that you can do from body work to just mind work, that kind of thing, being able to be very aware of that, assisting yourself through, making sure that you're exercising, drinking plenty of water, all of those things. You're doing you know, maybe body work, you're doing um, energy work, all of those kinds of things. And a lot of these things we can do on ourselves too. I mean, if you don't want to go get shiatsu massage, and you know you think that's too expensive for whatever reason it is, and particularly now with COVID, that kind of can be kind of hard. There, there are all kinds of things you can do. You can use rollers to move through your energy centers. You can unblock your own chakras. So just start looking online for that because there's a lot of self-care options that you can use to help yourself with blockages. Additionally, allowing your feeling and emotion. Talk about a helpful tip. I mean, do not stuff it down. When it shows up, deal with it. You know, cry it out, work it out, um, journal it out, determine where it's coming from. Um, it helps to talk to other people. I mean, you know, like that's what I do for my business, right? I mean, talk to other people about their awakening journey. Get on Zoom. Get connected with people. Have that conversation. Share. Get it out. Be with somebody you can trust where you can allow your emotions to be felt and talk through these experiences that you've had and come to terms with them and clear them out. And then lastly... Work toward that partnership with the energy. And I still say that mastering of it. Because to me, the mastering of it doesn't mean you're the master over the energy. It means you're mastering the process that you have when you experience these energies and how you can make it a, a more, I guess I'll just say, um, maybe pleasurable experience um, as you move forward in, in the sense that now you know your own triggers. Now you know some of the tips and tools like I just gave you that I know work for me in the journey of the energies coming in, whether it be divine energy of Kundalini or the ascension energies that, again, as I said, they're all divine, but they are different. They can show up differently in us. It's going to continue to happen. Also, Kundalini never leaves. It's there within you. It will operate differently over certain times of your awakening journey. So just know that. I have had, um, you know, during my journey, like I said, I have not had massive Kundalini experiences, but 
some people have had such massive experiences that they just feel like they've completely been rewired and short circuited and then there's a big recovery process but the point is is know that energy is in there for you you're going to be affected from one degree to another maybe subtly or maybe heavily it's all there for your greater good but what we can start doing is being able to master our own way of dealing with the energies and how we actually react to that and how we actually understand what's going on and so that we can come to the party as the conscious human to participate just like in this awakening journey it's not just done to us we have work we do as well so thank you so much for joining me today I hope you've taken something away on how to manage the energies within you as they enter you during your awakening and ascension journey as well as the characteristics of them so you can start understanding how your own body and mind react to them so i'll leave you with purplerainhealing.com check out all my services where i work with you one-on-one -on -one in channeling in all of my services to bring you through information that will help you in your awakening and ascension journey be it spiritual awakening mentoring where I work with you regularly be it channeled messages for you to take on your own and kind of decipher and figure out or documented sessions where I do distance energy healing and then a full-on document of your soul journey so I would love to work with you check out my services purplerainhealing.com connect with me if you're interested and again I thank you so much for being here you are so helpful to me in my journey and I love seeing your comments again thank you and I will see you in the next video